Years ago, a group of students waded into the water at Tybee Island, protesting in hopes of desegregating that beach. Several of those students were from Morehouse College right here in Atlanta, and their contributions are now being recognized today with a historical marker. CBS 46's Sawyer Bussey has the story. Look closely. These are some of the faces of change. You know, August 17th, 1960 was the first organized wade-in at Savannah Beach. These students were at what we know now as Tybee Island, wading into the waters of an all-white beach, hoping the waves they made opened the beach to everyone. They were responding to a nationwide call to action from the NAACP after an incident in Mississippi. So they do go on for a period of about three years. How many, I am not sure. It looks like records vary. Historians believe that some of those students were from Morehouse College, that they traveled from Atlanta all the way to Savannah. The wait-ins were part of protests happening all over Savannah. Protests Mary Gray, was a part of. I'm one of the originals that got arrested in 1963. We were at the Holiday Inn at a Neal Inn, so I'm one of the original. A lot of us are deceased now, but I was in jail for three days. All of these efforts combined led to the city of Savannah desegregating before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This historical marker is now standing on the beach where students spent an August afternoon wading fearlessly into the waters of an all-white beach, where a three-year peaceful protest began. I am just so happy to be here to witness this. We still have a long ways to go. There's one Morehouse student who is documented by name as being connected to the Savannah Beach wait-ins, Amos C. Brown. The college says for every Martin Luther King Jr., Julian Bond, and Benjamin Elijah Mays, there must be 100 Amoses. And at Morehouse, we're aiming to raise up more. Sawyer Bussey, CBS 46 News. Now, CBS 46 First Alert Web.